So I'm just going to start today with a little update on my new channel. I've uploaded all my videos oops, wrong one, to this channel now, not a real name. And uh, in doing so, that's how come I discovered that these other two videos had likewise been deleted by, well, not deleted, like the other ones, they come up with, um, you know, something to do with there's a defamation case. Yeah, well, there isn't, but maybe they're planning something. <laughs> maybe Adrian Brannock is planning to sue himself for defamation. Poor fool, he doesn't realise that defamation is only defamation if it's not true. <laughs> And I don't know, can you actually defame yourself? Or is that just called a confession? I don't know. You certainly can't give um, testimony that would incriminate yourself, which I think is really stupid because isn't a confession incriminating yourself? But anyway, that's my channel. I uploaded those two because they had been deleted. And the thing I noticed is that... Uh, any that had others in it didn't really get too much attention at all. So whoever's been getting my uh, videos deleted is more concerned about Adrian Brannock, nobody else. So, um, yeah, that should be telling to the others that he's not given any shit about, like Mark McMurtry and Pete Evans. He don't care. He could do exactly the same thing with your videos, but he doesn't. I mean, what is it? A copy and paste into a report area that pretty much they know the the bot robot's going to pick up on it and automatically delete it because of the right words? Hey, it's too easy for him, but he doesn't do it. got to ask yourself why. Because he wants all the attention on someone else. As long as the attention is on someone else, he thinks he's going to escape it. I mean, the only reason that Mark Darwin's not in there anymore is because they, he really needed someone to blame for the stuff up in Wollumbin Horizons. Mark Darwin was an easy choice. And uh, the way things are going... Yes, well, he's certainly looking after himself. But then we shouldn't expect any different from Adrian Brannock. Because when he said in there that, um, well, in this one where he says, one of my skills is fucking people over, he always uh, finishes it off with and makes sure he never loses anything, but he always comes out on top. You should remember that because, you know, the only difference between <laughs> Mark Darwin and the lost investors and some of the current people that actually think that that's not going to happen to is time. Because, you know, Adrian Brannock is facing some uh, pretty serious shit now. Now it's becoming exposed that he's a bankrupt. He's been conducting activities that he's disqualified from. He's concealed assets from his bankruptcy. And in so doing, he would have sworn to the court that he, he was being truthful about the affairs. So therefore, that's perjury of court. He's made false affidavits and false statements in the statement of affairs. So everything because of the fact that he tried to conceal them has made all statements that he's made before the courts false because he deliberately concealed information from the courts and from discovery. Now for that to happen too, he also had the cooperation of other people who helped him to move out of the directorships and to move the shares that he had in his name into the name of Nyepi, which he had just transferred into all his wife's name. Now, the fact that it has been transferred into all his wife's name and 
any wives or spouses should consider this. It's no protection and you could be held as an accomplice or aiding and, and abetting because you are a responsible adult and whether you're married to them or not, you should know the difference between doing the right thing and not doing the right thing. And you can't turn around and go, oh, but I was scared that he'd leave me if I didn't do it. Tough. You helped Adrian Brennock, Christy Brennock, helped Adrian Brennock conceal his shares by transferring them into her name. He still got all the vested interests and the profits from it and the control in all the major shareholdings that he needs to. So... It's interesting to note too, Nyepi has got its own trust fund. He didn't feel like he wanted to set up a foundation like what Mark Darwin had done for so many that was illegitimate and could cause the attention if it was discovered what Mark Darwin had done with so many foundations. Adrian Brunot might get caught up in that. Maybe he does have one or two in there, I don't know. But one thing I do know is that the trust for Nyepi was registered around the same time as what he first registered Nyepi. I haven't con confirmed the exact dates, but I'm pretty sure they're close, if not the same day. So all his shares now are controlled through Nyepi. He can't control them in his name. Now, he concealed them, and there were others that helped him conceal that. Not only his wife, but those that moved the directorships around and the shareholdings around too. It's interesting to note that in Canna Cannabis Industries Australia, when Adrian Brannock changed it into um, Nyepi, Phil Dixon also changed his into the name of Dixon Rainmaker and Mark Darwin changed it into Love One's Tribe, which is in Caroline Coman's name. It seemed that Mark Darwin also put things in his partner's name because he didn't want to be named directly in them. Perhaps not for the same reasons as what Adrian Brennock, but I think um, maybe Mark Darwin was starting to realise by the time of Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy that uh, the narrative and spiel that Adrian Brennock built that he was 10 foot tall and bulletproof wasn't quite true. And I think in a race to... <laughs> throw each other under the bus. I think Adrian Brannock did a better job. I don't think, uh, yeah, Mark Darwin came out second best, to say the least. Now, before I leave that subject, I'm just going to bring up one thing that I noticed that is unrelated to all of this, but more related to how the areas of informing people around certain subjects is getting even tighter. Now, if you look on this channel here, oh, I should have brought it up, you'll see that, um, ugh, hang on. All right, I use different thumbnails this time, but um, these two videos here about uh, well, basically, why I um, was looking at the Robina Sports Ground and the Dolphin Murals because of personal experience and the razor wire. I mean, it did. At a distance, it looks, you know, beautiful. You think, oh, wow, they've put a lot of effort into that. And then as you get closer, it's like, wow, there's something wrong with that. All that razor wire, the cameras the dead end train station but anyway that wasn't why I was bringing it up the reason that I'm bringing it up is because when I uploaded that to the other channel it virtually ate the first one straight away and I thought oh I wonder what it is in there and as it got towards the end I realized oh that's right 
Edward Everett at the end of the clips that I showed of him, he said these things about vaccines and viruses that, um, well, in my opinion, it was a good thing to leave in there because people needed to hear that even from the perspective of 2012, you know, um, how people felt about it and looked at, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say too much or I might get this one deleted anyway, because, um, yes, this one's still up here. When it was uploaded, the, like, you see, I imagine that as it's getting processed, um, the vocals are basically being searched for any keywords that might they might not like or the trace signature for any copyrighted material or any sensitive or banned material so that's why when you upload certain videos they get eaten up straight away they just w never see published as soon as you click publish it's removed they don't tell you that in the beforehand but anyway so yes um, on this channel part one disappeared because of what I dare say we said in there about vaccines and his opinion on them and also viruses too <laughs> but uh, so to get over that I did leave a link to this one and then I thought well you know it could only be a matter of time before that disappears so I also uploaded it to archive.org and left a link in it but yes, that was merely just a note too as to how within the well that was three months ago. And I've also noticed that with other videos that I've uploaded on other channels that when as a mirror, when I uploaded them, some of them it ate straight away. It wouldn't let me put up. And yet it's like, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, they're still on my other channel but I'm thinking well I'm not going to say that too much because oh no I should have said it about this one now that's alright there's a link to it somewhere else and other people can watch it so yeah anyway so hang on I'll just bring up the next thing now there's a number of specific videos that I want to do over the next couple of days that are basically so, uh, to give other people the means to be able to utilize uh, the video as a link to create comment or awareness but um, I will save that for other videos that are specific to something uh, this one I want to say more about what is planned for the actual development should it go ahead but to look at also what this whole nightmare <laughs> nightmare sorry that was a, a Freudian slip nightcap on Minjimbu, um is representing as far as what has it done to people what will it do to people? What is it currently doing to people? Is it doing no harm? Well, I think we've already come to the conclusion that it, they are doing harm. Not only to the land, which is looking so dead, but also to the people. Now, I just want to try and say something very quickly to make people aware that some people have dismissed this as minor that there are major things in the world going on that should be focused on. And my answer to that is that none of us can change the major things in this world. The sooner you realize that, the more you will realize that where you can expend your efforts is in the smaller, in the community where you are, through the acts and choices that you make it ripples out and affects everybody else, either in a good way or a bad way. 
Is this really true? Well, look at the people back in 2014, the ones that set up the scheme and the ones that bought into it. You might think that they're the only people that are involved in this story. They may be the only ones that had a choice in one way, shape or form. But there are more people that are currently suffering for this that never had any choice at all. See where the little hand is going up this road here? Do you see all those houses there? Do you see the people in the houses over here, over here, over here, up here? More along here, the houses here and here. These all have people in them. And if you see, they are scattered everywhere. And one thing, if you don't know the area, you don't appreciate just how important this little shopping district is, how important it is to the locals. And when I'm talking about the locals, I'm not just talking about a couple of people that live in this little area. I'm talking about, let me move it out. This broader area is reliant upon the access of services to this little shop and the facilities it provides. You think that could be crazy if you've never been to the area. But let me tell you that if you can't get petrol at the survey down here, or the bulldoze the whole area and you can't even go down to get a milk, do you, the closest shop is miles away, okay? Down here, like, let me show over here. There's a little teacup there, right, of the Sphinx Rock Cafe. Over here at Yukai is the closest place you're going to be able to get petrol or run out of milk or something like that. Now, it might actually be closer distance to go through to Nimbin, but it is a little bit steep, uh, steeper road and more windy and it's more wear and tear on the car and a little bit more dangerous road as far as well you can get some radicals driving along there because you have to imagine that um, a court, I'll, I'll share some gossip here now for those of you that don't know I'm gonna have to bring the map out here a bit to show Lismore alright there's Lismore okay so imagine that there's a cop chase from Lismore all the way along Nimbin Road, which is a few is tricky in a few places. But then there's been a few times I've been coming down Stony Shoot Road, and there's been a, that's a hairy road too, especially when you've got a car that's doing a runner from the cops, and the cops are chasing them. Yes, I think at one time or another people have experienced these things, but all the way to Nimbin, through Nimbin, up through here, and all the way up to the front gate, right here. And that's the front gate of 3222. That's where the cops chase them to. And apparently that happens quite a bit. So for people that never actually bought into Bulla Bulla or Nightcap on Minjimbal, that made no conscious choice and through no fault of their own, they've had their neighbourhood trashed and they want to trash it even more. Now, I had been communicating with people recently and uh, made the comment that, you know, three triple two was pivotal they intended to even stack all the houses on top of it which was impossible well they don't mean to stack all the houses in three triple two but a fair large majority of them i did say that they don't intend to use any of pvl's land but that's actually not the case so i just want to show people um 
and I'm just going to move this over for a sec before I bring the PDF up. So this is their little map here. Now if you notice where my hand is, little hand is down here in the pink, if we go along the main road there, that's just the Mount Burrell air, um, shopping area, commercial district there, right? And these little black dots around the outside are the border. Now these other circular dots that start going up the driveway at a certain distance are the lots that they intend to allocate to the people that are buying in. So at the very minimum, if we go over here and look at this, you can clearly see that the main house is takes up this area over here. So they haven't planned that um, they're going to trash that in any one build there, but they're planning that there's going to be lots along there on one side of the road, lots all the way down and around down to here and down this side as well. Now as part of the conditions they say of each lot is that you have to clear a certain amount of land. Well those that they intend that would go in there don't have to clear anything. In fact they would have a lot of work to do to restore the land. And I think it would be more important on a place like this that instead of having a trust deed or something like that, that there was what a lot of other um, building developments have, is a covenant. Uh, a covenant to maintain certain standards within the wilderness, within uh, the aesthetics, within a lot of restrictions that they would like to put on everyone to maintain the standard of that development. So to, to me, to not have a covenant to ensure that each person buying in on the lot does right by the land, as, as they say, the land is more important than the people. The people in the Yadaki principles come down the bottom of the list, not the top of the list. So even that doesn't even make sense. So if you look at that compared to what where they want to put in the lots, there's going to be houses all the way up on both sides of the road here and all the way up one side of the road until here where they're on both sides. Now if we look, hang on, I'll just bring that out a bit again. Now I'm hoping... Oh bugger, sorry. <laughs> I'm hoping that people can see the lines of the roads here. Uh, if I zoom in too much, I uh, won't be able to compare it to the map and you won't be able to see it as easily. But uh, this area over here is actually very clearly defined. I'll uh, we'll just bring it in a bit. I'll oh, pull, hang on. All right, there you go. <laughs> so as you can see, it's even the same shape. And what they intend to do is stick a row of housing all the way around there and around there. And you can see that the road will come down, it'll connect, it'll go across to here somewhere, probably in here. And all down through here, it'll be like a little suburb with all these little houses. I mean, and they're saying that the places need to be cleared pretty much you can see the land's already cleared but where it isn't cleared on these other roads that one looks like it's this one leading into the dam then there'd be the next one coming up here and there'd be all the develop the houses that they're looking at putting in along here as well as all the ones along the road here and then as you can see further feeding along into all these other areas here. A lot of housing sort of, where's that in there? That would be, um, I don't know, somewhere up around here anyway. But essentially they're planning on a lot of density of housing in the one place. You know, if you had 440 scattered, 
but they can't be so scattered because there needs to be the roadwork infrastructure and certain other conditions met which they're going to have a very big problem getting them met in so many regards now because there are so many issues that they're facing. Uh, it's not only the water catchment but because of the number of lots that are planned that's 440 lots and if you consider that that could well easily mean a thousand people which means that these people need to have access roads and if you look on here there's only actually two marked that they're using and um, there is actually a third entrance but they're pretty much not allowed to they said they're not going to use that because that is um, access for somebody else and in a sense, I suppose, even though it's a public road, you c could consider it a private road in that it's not a thoroughfare to get through to somewhere else other than the person that just lives beyond. Not all the major suburbia that people would use it as an access route to. But as you can see here that uh, not only is it a fire zone risk as well, that even if people did have to evacuate the area there really needs to be something that comes down in the middle that would allow for people to feed off and even then this area over here well I'd have to tell you that anyone that area over there looks to me like a pine plantation and if they don't completely clear the area out of pine trees, the people that would it be intended to build there are going to have to reinforce their roof and their verandas. Because anyone that's uh, been around pine trees and cockatoos will know how damn dangerous they are when they drop them. And the cockatoos love the pine cones. Now it would be my ideal that if they did allow something like this to go on then instead of blocking everyone in so much to make them much more distributed clear out all the pine plantation and get those that have bought into the community to establish fenced off areas of natural um, or native plant rejuvenation area and then it is everybody's responsibility to ensure that that is tended to and grows to maturity so that the fences can come down and the wildlife can now enjoy it. Well, a fair amount of wildlife would enjoy it already. The birds and the insects would enjoy it. It's just that a lot of uh, smaller trees would be damaged by wallabies and um, yeah, possums and other wildlife. Yeah, they need a chance to establish to become strong to be able to compete against them. So, in this way, it would be an ideal in that you do actually buy in to become custodians of the land and to restore it. But the thing is that the council, I don't think, is ever going to give approval for it. But uh, it doesn't stop the members from Nightcap on Minjimbal trying. Now, if you look, I'm just going to get rid of this now, at every section that they plan to put housing in, that also looks like pine plantation along there. Now, they would not say to the people buying in, right, we do need to get rid of this pine plantation it's worthless money so what we need to do is get rid of it and utilize it as best we can you know if um, look it's pine and it may even make good timber furniture you know my grandfather was a um, a carpenter he did a lot of wood turning and what isn't good for building houses or constructing certain things out of might be good for turning uh, you know, all those knots add character 
to um, turned pieces. They're rather boring if they don't actually have those little bit of characteristics in them. I mean, there's a lot of uses, even if, as I suggested, that you sold it off as firewood. People would buy it, especially the ones in the caravan parks that want to have something that will burn and burn quickly. They're not worried about sooting up chimneys or things like that. And if it's a cold night, they want something that's going to burn and give off some heat. These slow burning stuff that they give out, I'm sorry, you'd have to wait half the night for the fire to start to cook up to heat your meal on, uh, to cook your meal on. So these are all considerations of rejuvenation, of taking away the pine and restoring the natural. And, uh, well, Peter Van Leishout has had that land for a long time. It's worthless to him. He can't make any money, so he's not going to do anything with it. And the only way he would do anything with it is if someone offered to do it. And I don't know where Peter Van Leishout actually lives, but I kind of figure that might be his place up there or somebody's place. But if you look at the um, planned where the allotments are there there's also a little street along here where there'll be houses either side and you know if they give out the illusion that oh no it won't be suburbia you'll have privacy because of the trees and the bush no they won't all the place or oh, where are all the trees along in these places there are none and the trees down here there are no trees along here as well you're not going to have any privacy. You might as well have stayed in suburbia because guaranteed there are far less rules in suburbia. And you know, in suburbia, I don't, you know, anything that starts off by trying to sell you the benefits of a gated community, oh, that raises, you know, I don't want to go there. You know, where people think that a gated security means safety. To me, it just means they've got restrictions, that they've put their own set of rules on it. They're locking out the world and trying to pretend like it doesn't exist. <laughs> but anyway, so that's just a little bit of an overview of where they plan to stick all the lots if they were ever successful. And the multiple issues that they're facing. It's not only the water catchment, uh, the bushfire safety issues, but also the road access issues. But right now, I don't think they care too much about it because they'd actually like to get some money coming in to them that wasn't reliant upon members buying in, but pretty much the uh, public, the tourists, that are bringing in the, the money. And I've done a little bit of pondering over what they might be doing with this extra land parcel across the road. And to me, it actually makes sense that they might, there's already accommodations along here that would ideally suit woofers. So to pretty much leave that part as is, and move everything over here and set up for the caravan park over the other side of the road with the access of Waratah Court. There is a slight incline, but uh, you never know what these boys are going to come up with as far as their ideas are concerned. But what they do come up with isn't going to affect the past lost investors in the same way that it's going to affect those that actually live in the community right now. Those that have had their home destroyed. You know, they were living in paradise until the neighbours from hell moved in. And it's just gone from bad to worse ever since. And a lot of those that, um, you know, provided the money that enabled them to do that, they don't even live there anymore. They're not even living with the problem that was created. No, it's all the people in the area. 
especially those reliant on the Mount Burrell shops. You know, it was a place where you could meet your, your neighbours too, catch up. I mean, chances were, I mean, if it was like you, Kai, every time you went to the shop, you met someone you knew. And, yeah, it would be good to catch up. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and save what I've got to say in uh, for other videos. I just wanted to remind people of the fact that this is not a small issue. It involves hundreds of people in a larger community. And the only way to change the larger and the major issues is to first tend to the minor ones. I think the fact that we've overlooked the importance of all the little things of why things have got to the big way that they have in 2020. And for some people it is, well, not a surprise. In fact, it hasn't actually been as bad as what had been made out by a lot of... <laughs> It's all doomsday, you know, the world's going to end kind of stuff. And it won't. That's the thing about the earth. Human beings might, uh, you know, we might put each other into extinction, but the earth itself is going to survive and keep going. And all the plants and the wildlife are going to thrive in our absence. We should remember that, you know, that we're here for in the blink of an eye of time yet. We could become the next endangered species because of the way we treat each other. We think that, you know, that what we do on the small scale doesn't matter. It's only what we do on the big. No, how you affect the big is by what you do in the little. History is full of people that changed the course of history. You are taught one person can't make a difference. But even when you are taught the history that we're supposed to accept as happened, of course there are plenty of people that changed the course of history, either in their culture or in their country or the whole world. I mean, people that changed the world from their presence in it and you could name off plenty plenty of people that change things well good or bad the thing is that each and every one of us the only way you can change the whole is through the individual and if you don't understand that well then well maybe you'll come across it one day maybe you'll get it that you can't change the big things because the big f things are a manifestation of all the little things that people do or don't do. You want to change the whole. you got to start with yourself and work out from that. <laughs> anyway, said I was going to leave it at that. And this time I mean it. <laughs> I'll catch you next time.